Hello everyone, and welcome to my first Haunted House review, and really my first real review in general. Today I will be reviewing Big Top Freaks, a clown-themed haunted house, which is one of the three haunted houses at Elitch Garden's Fright Fest. On October 6th, which at the time of this video being made was yesterday, I had the opportunity to go through this haunted house for the first time, so these were my first impressions of the house, and everything in there was completely new to me. In this video, I will be discussing the experience of going through this attraction, some of my favorite moments and scares, things I like, things I didn't like, and my overall thoughts and rating. Of course, there will be several spoilers in this review, so if you like everything to be a surprise, you should probably stop watching right now. So, first I would like to talk about what it is like to approach this attraction for the first time. When you're walking up to the queue to get in line, you'll be passing by the exit of it. So you'll be able to see people running out of the exit, which definitely hypes up the experience. They actually have a pretty large facade set up for Big Top Freaks, with a giant red and white wall that hides the buildings that the attraction uses, and a giant clown's mouth that you enter through, and it makes it look like a big creepy fun house. And I think this looks pretty good from a distance, but if you look closely you can definitely see some seams. And this isn't really a big deal, but it's just something I noticed. When you get to the front of the line and it's time for your party to go in, they're going to have you stand in a line right in front of the entrance, and a person dressed as a zombie ringleader gives you the attraction backstory and the safety rules. You cannot have anything in your hands when you go through, stuff needs to be in your pockets. Also, if you try to film in the attraction, they will tell you to put your camera away. Uh, one more thing I noticed is that if you have a backpack or a purse, you will need to leave it at the entrance and then walk back around to get it when you're done. From the time you go in to the time you come out, it takes about five to six minutes, depending on how fast you move. I was actually very pleasantly surprised at how much they managed to fit in such a short amount of time, as I counted about 30 jump scares and effects in about 10 to 15 different sections, depending on what you define as a section. There were several memorable scares, but there were also quite a few that were nothing special. Not bad, just not really memorable. A couple places looked like there were spots where there were actors that were supposed to be there, but there weren't. There were four particular moments that really stick out to me when I think about my experience with this house. First, there was one room that was filled with fog and had laser lights positioned in it in such a way that you couldn't see below your waist. They had a clown who would hide under this barrier and suddenly pop up right next to you as you were trying to navigate through the area. You could tell that something was going to happen, but it was still pretty surprising nonetheless. It's a pretty cool effect. The next two scares that I'm going to talk about actually surprised me because they were animatronics, which I was not expecting. I thought this whole house was only live actors. About a third of the way through, you go through a room that is entirely devoted to a massive animatronic clown that was at least nine feet tall. Its head and arms moved, and it moved back and forth at people walking through the room. And it was just pretty cool to see such a large animatronic in a house that I actually didn't th even think had room for that kind of thing. The other major animatronic was a creature that crawled on the ceiling down a tunnel at you when you were walking by, and I actually thought it was a real person for a split second before I realized that it was just an animatronic. The final scare that I'm going to discuss here is actually one of my favorite haunted house scares of all time, just because of how creative it is. You've probably seen the squeeze tunnels that they have, where there are two inflatable walls on both sides of you that you have to squeeze through. And this house had one of those, except about halfway through, the plastic on your left side became clear, and there was a clown behind it who jumped at you and pressed up against the wall while a strobe light flashed. They obviously don't touch you, as there's a clear plastic barrier, but they get really close to you, and you really do feel trapped. So, uh, that was probably one of my favorite effects of all time. So, lots of good scares in here, and these were only some choice ones, there were several more good ones. Now, let's talk about some of the things that Big Top Freaks could have done better on. Firstly, I think that the prime time to do this attraction would be at night. I cannot confirm this, as I did it at 6 o'clock when the sun had not set yet. So, but the reason I say this is that there are a few short sections that were outside, and broad daylight kind of ruins the effect of some scares. Granted, there were only two or three parts where you were outside, and they were brief, but they broke the immersion and made the scares in those areas less impactful. And it wasn't a huge problem, but if they wanted to make it perfect, they could start by changing that. My second issue is that there are a few parts where just nothing happened. There was a decently long section where you would walk through a few corridors that had lots of stuffed animals attached to the walls. And I'm not really sure if something was supposed to happen, but nothing did while I was walking through that area. There was also another room that was dimly lit and filled with fog that nobody was in. The point might have just been that it was supposed to be disorienting, but it felt just like a little bit of a waste of space. Another thing I noticed is that there's no story or anything to tie the scenes together. 
I don't really think there was supposed to be one, but I think it would have been really cool if they could somehow make a storyline of some sort. I also thought it would have been cool if there was something big and impressive to wrap the maze up with, but instead you just get jump scared by a clown with a chainsaw and then that's it. You're, you're done. There's no conclusion or anything. Once again, I don't really think that there was supposed to be a conclusion since there's no storyline, but it's just another thing I noticed. So uh, what is my overall rating for Big Top Freaks? While it's definitely not the scariest or most technically impressive haunted house you'll ever visit, and it has a few flaws, it still has a lot of good moments and several creative scares. And even though the clown-themed haunted house has been done several times over, I think Big Top Freaks executes it pretty well. So I'm giving it a 6 out of 10, and I would recommend giving it a try if you're at Fright Fest. If you have any questions, then please comment them, and I will be do doing my best to answer. And feel free to share your thoughts on Big Top Freaks at Elitch Gardens Fright Fest.